Hello everyone. Welcome to Digital Image Processing NIT AP. This is Dinesh from 4th year BTech ECE department. In this video let's discuss about Laplacian filter. First we will briefly discuss about Laplacian filter and coming to that point we will also discuss about what is Laplacian, Divergence and Gradient. And we will also see what is the intuition of Laplacian. After that we will derive the Laplacian filter mask and we will also demonstrate the derived Laplacian filter mask in the MATLAB. And finally we will see the summary. Now let's discuss about what is Laplacian filter. It's basically a high pass filter. Specifically speaking it's a second derivative filter. This filter is mainly used to detect the edges in an image. Speaking about that point, edges are nothing but a high frequency components. Since Laplacian filter is a high pass filter, only these edges are passed through the filter and these edges are zero crossings in Laplacian of an image. Coming to applications of Laplacian filter, there are many applications ranging from electronic printing, medical imaging to industrial inspection and autonomous guidance in military systems. Now the point Laplacian filter uses the second derivative of an image to detect the edges brings us to the Laplacian operator. So now let's discuss what is Laplacian operator. Laplacian is kind of a certain operator like divergence, gradient, curl or derivative which takes in some kind of function and gives us another function. Specifically it's a mathematical tool which computes the second derivative. Let f of x comma y be a multivariable scalar function then Laplacian of f of x comma y is defined as divergence of gradients of f. The output of Laplacian is a scalar because here f is a scalar function and the gradient of scalar is a vector and the divergence of vector is a scalar. Now before going deep into the Laplacian operator let's briefly discuss about what is divergence and what is gradient. Gradient operates on a scalar field and gives vector as an output where the magnitude of the vector indicates the rate of change of the scalar field and the direction of the vector tells us the direction we should go to increase the value of the function most rapidly. Now let's try to get more understanding about the gradient in MATLAB. Now let's realize this gradient in MATLAB. Now let's walk through this code to understand the gradient. Here we are taking three symbolic variables x, y and z and we are asking the user to give an scalar function as an input and we are storing that function in the variable f. Now in this section we are plotting this function in the figure 1. Now we have to calculate the gradient of this function. MATLAB provides us a function of gradient where it finds the gradient of vector of the scalar function f with respect to the vector v in Cartesian coordinates the input f is a function of scalar variable symbolic scalar variables x y and z and the vector v specifies the scalar differentiable variables now we have to plot this gradient function to plot this vector field defined by these components MATLAB provides us a function a quiver plotting function for this task the function but this function does not accept the symbolic arguments which which we have taken x y and z so we have to first replace these symbolic variables in the expression with the components of g with numeric values so we are taking a mesh grid x y and we are uh, calculating the numeric values instead of symbolic values uh, and we are giving these as inputs to the quiver function and we are plotting the gradient function let's let's run this code now here here it is asking the function as an input This is the gradient field of this function. Now 
now here we can see these two figures this is our input function cos of x into y and this is the gradient of the scalar function here in the third quadrant we can observe that the direction of this gradient indicates the direction we should go to increase the value of the function most rapidly here we can observe from this points to increase the value of the function we should go more rapidly this is the direction we should go and here it is this direction and and we can observe all these are coming to this point and from this graph also we can observe to increase the value of the function most rapidly we have to go towards the center and this gradient direction also you know, indicates those things and the magnitude of this gradient indicates the rate of change of the scalar function here we can see there is more slope compared to here so here we can observe that the magnet that is the magnitude of this gradient field is more here and coming towards the center it is becoming zero that 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 only we can observe here the rate the rate of change of the scalar function at this point is more rather than here here it becomes zero and here it is more hence the gradient and the direction of the gradient tells us the di direction we should go to increase the value of the function most rapidly and the magnitude of this gradient field tells us the rate of change of the scalar function at that point now divergence is another operator which operates on a vector field and it tells us the net flow of the vector field observed on a small volume divergence is defined at a particular point in the vector field hence it measures the tendency of a vector field as it acts like a source or sink at that particular point we can say that if divergence of a vector field at a particular point is positive then it is acting as a source at that point and if it is negative it is acting as a sink at that point and if it is zero it is acting as a divergence less let's try to get more understanding about this divergence operator in matlab let's realize this divergence in matlab to understand in detail about divergence here we are taking three symbolic variables x, y, z and we are asking user to input i component of vector field and j component of vector field and we are storing those in x in and y in respectively. Now we have to plot this vector field to understand and realize how it looks like. And we know MATLAB provides the pure function to plot this vector field but we also know that it doesn't take symbolic variables as an input. So we are assigning the numerical values to capital X comma capital Y and we are assigning those in small x and small y and we are substituting that in x in so that we are getting the i component numerical values and j component numerical values in f1 and f2 respectively. Now we are substituting that in pure function and we are getting the vector field plot. Now we have to calculate the divergence of this vector field using the divergence function and let's store this in the div variable and in this we are plotting this uh, in figure 2 we are using fsurf function to plot this divergence in figure 2 now let's run this code and check the figures here it's asking the i component of the vector field Now it's asking the J component. Here we can observe this is the vector field and this is the divergence of this vector field. Here we can observe all the vectors are spreading away from this point that is all these vectors are appearing from nothingness hence we can say that the net flow if we take a small cube of volume the net flow from this point is positive so we can see that this is maximum because if we consider a small cube of volume in this point all the vectors are flowing outside the cube Hence the net flow is positive and it's maximum here. From the graph of this divergence also we can observe at this point divergence is maximum. And 
as we are going towards this point in this graph also we can observe as we are going towards this point divergence is becoming negative this is because at this point all the vector fields are going into nothingness that is all these vectors are going and just disappearing here at this point hence we can if we take a small cube of volume the net flow is negative that is all the vectors are flowing inside the small cube of volume hence we can say at this point divergence is negative and it's the minimum and also we can observe at this point if we take a small cube of volume divergence is the net flow at this point is decreasing we can also observe that in the in this graph that from this point to this point divergence is decreasing from maximum to minimum since we can say this point is acting as a source because all these vector fields at this point are appearing from nothingness and at this point divergence is negative and we can say it is acting as a sink because all these vectors are going into nothingness hence we can say that if divergence is positive it is a source field and if divergence of vector is negative it is a sink field and if divergence is zero we call that as solenoidal or divergenceless field now what is laplacian we know it is divergence of gradients of f but what it is supposed to mean let's try to understand this by the figures shown here from the figure one the above one is a multivariable scalar function and the below is the gradient of the scalar function now from the figure 2 we can observe at the maximum point in the scalar function by observing the corresponding gradient field in the below uh, and applying divergence at that point we can say that it's negative as it is act as all the vectors are coming to a single point it's acting like a sink and divergence is negative at that point and at the figure 3 at the minimum point of the scalar function by observing the gradient plot below we can see that at that point its divergence is away from that point means means divergence of gradient at that point is positive it is acting like a source because all the gradient vectors are um, moving away from that point hence this laplacian operator is a kind of operator which helps us to measure how much minima or maxima point is this function at a particular point x comma y hence we can conclude at minima laplacian is positive and at maxima laplacian is negative now let's see what is the intuition of laplacian that is how we can use second derivative of an image to detect the edges we know when there are edges in an image there will be sudden change in intensity values at these points now let's understand how we can use second derivative of an image to detect the edges. Now let's take the below f of x where we can observe the sudden change hence we can say that it is an edge. And by applying first derivative since it is a sudden change we will get an impulse function. By applying derivative again to this impulse function we will get the function as shown in plot 3. Here we can observe the zero crossing. Hence at the edge in an image that is at the sudden increase or decrease in f of x we can observe in its second derivative there is a zero crossing now we use this property to detect the edges of an image by using laplacian operator now let's try to understand this property of zero crossing at the edges of an image here we will try to understand this with the help of this image here let's take a line a b in this image and the intensity values in this strip are given in the array image strip as shown and the plot of this intensity values is also given in the first figure as we observe along the line a b first there is a bright pixels and then it is decreasing and at a particular point there is a sudden increase in the intensity value and again there is dark intensity values and we can observe there is a line passing and hence again it is rising intensity value and again there is a dark intensity values and there is a some rectangle white shed hence again there is a rise in intensity values all this can be observed in the plot in the first plot shown second plot is the double derivative plot of the first one and here we can observe at the bright point at the single bright point and at the line 
and at the rectangle area there are zero crossings. Hence we can observe these zero crossings detect the edges in an image. Now let's see the derivation of Laplacian filter mask. For one dimensional case as we have seen in the above example for the line AB, dou square f by dou x square is f of x plus 1 plus f of x minus 1 minus 2 times of f of x. Now for two dimensional image considering x and y coordinates for double derivative with respect to x keeping y as constant and for double derivative with respect to y keeping x as constant dou square f by dou x square is f of x plus 1 comma y plus f of x minus 1 comma y minus 2 times of f of x comma y and dou square f by dou y square is f of x comma y plus 1 plus f of x comma y minus 1 minus 2 times of f of x comma y. Total derivative that is second derivative of the image is dou square f by dou x square plus dou square f by dou y square which is f of x plus 1 comma y plus f of x minus 1 comma y plus f of x comma y plus 1 plus f of x comma y minus 1 minus 4 times of f of x comma y. Now to implement this equation in pixels we need to apply convolution. For convolution directly we can't apply this on an image. We need some filter mask. Since we are doing second derivative in discrete case we are finding the difference of the differences. So we need at least 3 pixels. So that's why we are using 3 by 3 mask as shown in first matrix. Now to get the filter mask we put the coefficients of the terms in the total derivative equation in the first matrix and we will get the second matrix which is del square equals to 0 1 0 1 minus 4 1 0 1 0 here there is a slight disadvantage we are considering only x direction and y direction but edges can be in any direction so to be more accurate by considering the distance epsilon the del square becomes 1 by 6 epsilon square times and the matrix is 1 comma 4 comma 1 and 4 comma minus 20 comma 4 and 1 comma 4 comma 1. Now let's use this Laplacian filter mask to detect the edges of an image in MATLAB. Now let's see the MATLAB execution of this Laplacian filter mask. Understand about the Laplacian filter. Here we are reading the image move and storing it in the variable x and we are showing it in the display. In figure one, the end we have we have derived the Laplacian filter mask h, which is 0, 1, 0 and 1 minus 4, 1 and 0, 1, 0. Now let's apply this filter h to the image x and get this output. And we are showing this output in figure two. Let's run this code. Now. Here we can observe this is the lab this is the original image moon which is inbuilt in the matlab library hence by giving this moon.tf in image read it is taking it into the variable x and this is the edge we can see this is the edge detected using the laplacian filter this is the original image this image shows the edges in the original image of the moon. In conclusion, the takeaway points of this Laplacian filter mask are it is an high pass filter, specifically second derivative filter, and it is used to detect edges in an image, but it provides only the location of the edge and its detection is based on zero crossing. The reference for this Laplacian filter mask is taken from the Gonzalez Digital Image Processing book. With this we will end our video. Thank you.